Today's conversation is sponsored by First Generation Capital Partners. If you're an accredited investor and you want to know about how we're helping other accredited investors keep more of their income, go to firstgencp.com forward slash going long. Problem in itself is not a problem. It's like a bunch of little things together that we say is a problem. So breaking down that concept, what is there that I'm scared of? What is the hesitation? What do I do not know? You're listening to the Going Long Podcast with Billy Keels, the number one podcast for long-distance real asset investing. Welcome to the Going Long Podcast. We're back once again to continue to help to educate you so you feel much more comfortable as well as confident investing beyond your backyard. And guess what? I'm your host, Billy Keels, and I am super excited about today's conversation, sharing it with you. We're going to jump right into it because listen, before we jump into it, I just want to say thank you so much for continuing to share uh, and Tag us across social media. It's really, really awesome. Keep it up Look on LinkedIn, on um, on Instagram. We really, really appreciate that you're doing that. And it helps us to continue to be able to get out in front of other new future uh, in podcast family members. So really appreciate that. Also, if you want to leave your honest written review as well as rating, you have an opportunity to do that. We even have a very simple video that you can check out uh, on the Apple and Spotify uh, platforms. And then if you want to check out any of the previous episodes, just go to firstgencp.com forward slash podcast. It's firstgencp.com forward slash podcast. Check out the transcripts, the audio, the video, all of that stuff. And so if you are someone who has spent, let's say a decade or more in a corporate role, and you have the opportunity, you've been thinking about like, what do I make the transition? How do I start investing? Uh, what will they think at the office? All that kind of stuff. Like you're really going to get a major amount out of today's conversation because you're going to get some tips on things that worked, things that didn't work and help you to be able to move forward faster. So we're going to have the conversation with the founder and CEO of Luma Investment Group, Binky Lumba, and we're going to get to that just after this. Are you a busy high paid professional? Someone that in the previous two years has earned $200,000 and is expected to earn $200,000 this year? Or maybe if you filed jointly, previously you've earned $300,000 the previous two years and you're also expected to do that this year. Or maybe if not, either individually or or jointly, you have a million dollars in net worth, not including your primary residence. If you meet any of these criteria, then you're someone that the IRS considers to be an accredited investor. That probably means you're someone like an enterprise software sales executive. You may be an executive in a major corporation. You may be a doctor. You may be a lawyer, maybe a high paid consultant. You may even work for a major sports franchise. The thing I know you have in common is that you continue to do the hard work. Like you're doing 100% of the work and you're only bringing home 50% of the reward because you continue to get crushed by your income taxes. If you are tired of this situation and you're looking for a new solution, then go to firstgencp.com forward slash going long. When you get there, that's going to help you to start the journey so that you can begin to take back control of your taxes, take control of your time. And then also that means you're going to be able to spend more of the time that you want with the people that you love the most. And that is the way that you're going to get the personal freedom that you're looking for. So if you're looking to take back control, go ahead and go to firstgencp.com forward slash going long and see how we can help you today. So if you want to understand how expertise in finance, as well as IT, can help you to break free from the daily grind and take control of your financial life through long distance investing, then guess what? Today's the conversation that you're going to want to listen to until the very last word. I promise the very last word, because you know what? You're you're really, really going to love this because today's guest not only started professional career as a systems engineer in IT, and I think she'll probably tell us a little bit more about that. The cool part is she also spent 19 years as an executive in a financial services industry. Really, really big company. Maybe she'll even tell us a little bit more about that because she understands how the big company employees uh, work and think and all that kind of good stuff. She also was a, a realtor on the sales and acquisition side of things as well as a professor at California State University System, and I'm sure she'll tell us about that. And she's the host of a super, super popular podcast called RE Vibes, Real Estate Vibes. And she is the founder and CEO of Lumba Investment Group. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to today's conversation, Binky Lumba. Binky, welcome to the show. 
Thank you so much, Billy. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it. An introduction. I love it. Oh my God. That makes me feel good about myself today. <laughs> you are awesome. You are awesome. This is going to be so everybody listen, just get ready because it's going to be an amazing conversation. No pressure, Binky, no pressure at all. But uh, listen, I'm looking forward to this conversation and I know you have so much experience, expertise that you're going to share with us today and really help the entire Going Long family be able to continue to move forward faster. And so I just want to jump into the questions because you know, Binky, you're going to get five questions. You're going to get two in the beginning. You're going to get three in the very end. And then in the middle, like you're probably going to get a lot of questions. I just don't know what any of those are. So I want to go ahead and get asking the first question, which is help the Going Long family understand where is it that you live in the U.S.? I live in the Bay Area, in San Francisco Bay Area. I moved to the United States about 30 years ago and love it. Since then, I've been here and enjoying my life. All right. Fantastic. I think out there on the left coast. So the Bay Area, we love that. So help us also understand, because you really like positivity, just like me. Help me and the Going Long family understand, Binky, what's the most positive thing that has happened to you, for you in the last 24 hours? Two things happened today. Positive. Number one is that I woke up today to do something more meaningful and exciting. And the second thing happened is that I'm talking to you on your show this morning. The first thing. (laughs) You're phenomenal. We love this. Absolutely love it. So no, and we appreciate you uh, investing time with us today and we're going to make the most of this. And so, but here's one of the other things, Vinky, because you kind of know me a little bit and I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I'm a recovering perfectionist. And so Mm -hmm. what that means is sometimes I do things that really are impossible to do, but it's that like gene that wants to try to make things perfect every single time. And I'm going to give you an example. I try to do things like so impossible, like telling your entire backstory in like one and a half seconds. That was never going to happen, but I keep trying to do it all the time. And so, you know, hopefully you will forgive me for that, but more importantly, that you will help me because I would love for you to tell your backstory in your own words, share that with the going along family. And if you don't mind, because I guess this is kind of my show, so I can ask for one favor maybe, is mm-hmm. if you could also share with us some of the major decisions that you made to get to this point in your journey. And then we'll see where you and I take the conversation from there. Of course. So uh, this is a good question and very vague. Where do you want me to start? That's the question is now. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> the platform is yours, my friend. <laughs> so I'll, st- I'll go way back how I started my life. Um, I was in school studying, got married, and it was an arranged marriage, believe me or not. I was uh, still uh, doing my master's. Uh, There's a degree called MPhil after the master's program because I wanted to become a professor. That was my goal in my life when I was uh, in school. And uh, to become a professor, you have to do a shorter form of PhD, and then you can pursue PhD later sometime in your life to become a full-fledged professor from the lecturer. And uh, I was pursuing that. And one day my dad came home and he says, guess what? Uh, My friend's uh, brother is coming from U.S. So I would like you to meet him. And then I'm going to get you married on July 15th. And guess what? What was that date when he told me this day? It was on June 29th. And I'm like, whoa, how is that possible? He's like, we know the family for over the years. That's what is going to happen. Get prepared. And my now husband came to our house on June 30th and everything was decided. And there you go. I was married on the 15th and was only 21 years old at that time. And I wasn't even sure what was happening. And uh, I think that was the biggest decision in my life. Like you were asking me what decision I made. Because I had a choice to move away from that because parents give you a choice, say yes or no. It's not that formal, but it's kind mm-hmm. of, yeah, you have a little bit of choice. But um, I decided to go along with my dad this season. So I end up here in the U.S. So moving countries, that was another big decision in my life. Coming to U.S., I wanted to pursue my Ph.D. because I wanted to become a professor after coming here, too. But destiny had something else in store for me. I got pregnant right away after coming here. So I had my first child, my beautiful daughter. And uh, that changed my trajectory now. My husband said he was in the business field. He said, oh, I work for Bank of America. Maybe 
you, if you do the PhD, it's going to take you another five years. Why don't you try the business side of it? Since you have the background, because my master's was in management, it says like, and then your thesis in that regard as well. So you might like it, try it for a few years. And by the time uh, our daughter will grow up and you'll have time to pursue your PhD. So I put my PhD on the back burner. I look for a job, I found a job and I joined Bank of America as a management trainee. So that's another big decision, mm-hmm. moving away from my dreams. So, but I do not regret any of them. So then when I joined Bank of America, I was thinking, I'm going to be here only for a couple of years. <laughs> then I'm going to move out. And I'm going to pursue my PhD, become a professor. That didn't happen because I was getting opportunity after opportunity to climb the corporate ladder. Mm-hmm. So I just was kind of in the flow kept climbing that ladder. And uh, during that time frame, we bought another big house and we were in a position to rent our first home, which we did. And we realized the passive income flow. And we're like, woohoo, we figured out, right? <laughs> and then we started multiplying. Uh, from there, we started buying duplexes and got my realtor license. So that was not um, another thing that I plan on, but another decision right there, getting a realtor license and become realtor. And I went into the retail side to sell businesses like gas stations, liquor stores. So we started investing a little bit there as well. And uh, But then over the time, it became big for us to handle. And between the two corporate jobs, and by the time we have another baby, my son, our second baby, and then uh, two jobs, two kids. It was too much for us to handle. And uh, so one day when I flew back from Chile, we were traveling a lot, both of us. We didn't used to have VPN those days, if you recall. So my husband says, hey, Vinky, you wanted to pick one job, either your corporate job or you wanted to stick to real estate because you cannot do everything. I know you think you're invincible, Hmm. but pick one. So another decision right there. So I picked the corporate job over the real estate, not knowing the power of real estate, because as much as I knew, I knew only the retail side of it. Like I can sell businesses and make commission of it. I did not have the, it was not in my experience that you can do merger acquisitions or you can do this multifamily. What are we doing now? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that decision took me to the corporate ladder, started climbing that. But now, fast forward about five, six years when I got a chance to take off on my job, I stepped back into real estate. And there's a story behind it, too. And I forgot one thing in there, my professor, that was a decision, too. So I'm going to say something over here. In your life, whatever happens, what steps you take or what actions you take, what decision you make, everything is preparing you for the next step in your life. So that's what was exactly happening with me because my goal was to become a professor. That's what my vision was as I was growing up. But that was that kept delaying the whole time. But 10 years ago, I got a chance to do that because when I completed my MBA, I made so many friends in the California State University. So one of my professors, he was the chair at that time, he reached out to me. He he said, Vinky, you wanted to teach one class or two classes? So that's how I got started on the professor side. And then my dream came true. I'm like, wow. Then I realized the life, the patterns in life and realized that everything happens for a reason and you won't get the things until unless you're ready for it. So life was preparing me, preparing me for the journey to be a professor and I was a professor. But now I'm a former professor because I'm 100% in real estate. So I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to let you ask. Any questions here? Well, I have like a thousand questions that I want to ask you, Vinky, but I can only ask you one at a time. I want to ask you like so many. So, you know, there's a, there's a number of different things that you, that you talked about. And when I hear you saying being a professor, that's one thing. But what I do know about you is that you're an educator regardless, Mm -hmm. right? So no matter what it is that you're doing. Earlier, you talked about the you sold your, or you, you rented your first home and you realized the power of passive income. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I guess one of the things that I would love to know is, was that something that was intentional or was that something that was accidental? When that you, was accidental. Yeah. Okay. So it was accidental, but was it, how quickly did you realize, okay, well, we just, this is an accidental thing. You became an accidental landlord, which happens to many people, but mm -hmm. then you realized like, talk us through that process for you as someone who was working, you know, to both you and your husband working in, in corporate roles, this was happening and young children. And at the same time, you realized, well, hang on a second. Th this is potentially something that we can do more of. T talk us through what that was, what that was like. Yeah, that was a, a really good period as well, because we were in a position, like I said, uh, to afford two homes at one time. So we rented one and then uh, once we rented, we realized we don't even have to worry uh, about, you know, having enough to just own a second home because the mortgage was being paid by the rent. And plus there was a positive cash flow, about $500. And it was like, oh, we hit the jackpot kind of thing, you know. So then we started buying, we bought, uh, you know, a few more duplexes in the area. And that's what made me get the realtor license. But the mm -hmm. only mistake, uh, I think you're going to ask me at some point, what mistake uh, did I make or why did we move away from that model? The mistake that we did was we were young, uh, we say landlords not having enough knowledge. We didn't realize that there is something called the property management company. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, and, what, and what would that property management company do? <laughs> so what we're trying to do is we're trying to manage everything ourselves. And um, a little bit background on my husband, he's from India. And in India, you know, all the boys are like, they're the princes, you know, they're mm. the prince in the family. And the parents don't teach you to do anything because everything is readily available. Uh, you know, just a phone call away. Okay, if you mm. need to put a nail in the wall, you have somebody to do it for you. So he grew up in that kind of environment. And uh, managing these properties or going in, helping the tenants or what you call that, you know, uh, tenants, toilets yeah. and pain, I would say. In the third yeah. word. So it was too much for him to handle. because mm -hmm. uh, And plus, uh, we didn't realize that we could hire somebody who can help us do all those things. And that's the mm -hmm. biggest mistake that we did. Well, you know what? So it, and it's interesting, right? Because you say it earlier that everything is preparing you for like the next thing. Right. And so mm -hmm. what that was doing, and, and I, I would love to get your, your take on this because one of the time, one of the things that when I'm speaking to people, a lot of, you know, very similar to you speaking to high paid professionals that want to either get into this world because they've heard about uh, investing passively and they've heard about the power of real estate specifically and then other things. But what I've found is that there's usually people that fall into one of two camps. It's either the person that really feels like they need to do everything or they want to do everything or the person that feels like it does, it's not like it costs too much to pay someone else to do that. So, but either way, they're doing all of the work. I'm just curious if one, if you also find that that is the case and then two, having lived through that, right? Because you lived through that, what you call the mistakes, but it's preparing you for today when you're having and you're educating other people. So if you could talk to us or just let me know, like, do you see that as well? And then when you do see that, how is it that you help, um, especially high paid professionals realize that, Hey, there's another way to actually go about doing what it is that you're trying to achieve. That's true. I mean, it's a really good question, actually, you know, uh, because it's all just like um, having the vision and how you're putting all the pieces in the puzzle together. So what happened was, if I take our scenario, we had too much in our plate. Mm. We have uh, two corporate jobs and two young kids and lots and lots of travel between the two of us. Yeah. So it's not like that. I just make a joke all the time that uh, we did not know that property management companies existed. Maybe we knew at that time too, but the thing is nobody had the time yeah. to make the phone call and get the right people. We just have a couple handymans. We were not doing anything ourselves anyways, because mm -hmm. we didn't even know how to do it. So we had the handymans. We were just depending 100% on the handyman and mm -hmm. just calling them and if they're available, not available. So that was very stressful for us. Mm -hmm. So just like aligning the right resources that helps you. And that can only happen if you are doing your time management properly. If you understand your, you know, your ultimate goal, like I said, it's a puzzle, just piecing all the, uh, putting all the pieces together, the picture is going to be clear. 
our picture was not clear. We didn't have much clarity. Yes, money was coming. Everything was happening. But it was like a hodgepodge. Mm. We just like, okay, you do this, you do this. We just didn't have the right team in place. And which is very, very important. And no matter what you're doing, even you're doing a corporate job, right? So whatever you're doing, you have a team with you to complete that whole project from conception to completion. You're not doing everything yourself. And there's no possible way anybody can do everything by herself or himself. You need other energy, other forces with you. Yeah, absolutely. And this is one of the things. So I want to ask you another question, but I just, because you worked in one organization for 19 years. I worked in one organization for 16 years, right? And so there aren't a lot of people nowadays that have done things like you and I've just done. But one of the things that I just want so many of our, especially corporate employees just to, I hope you heard what Vinky just said, which was you have to have a team. Many of you, you continue to be successful in your corporate roles because you are fantastic at building consensus, being able to get the right people on board and drive towards a specific goal. Mm-hmm. It's no different here. Like you use the exact same skill set that you use in your job, but you just use it for um, your yourself. And so one of the things that, that you'd also mentioned with that, Binky, is you, you talked about you calling the, the, the handyman or your husband calling the handyman and I don't necessarily know, like, cause there's some people today that are, that are trying to figure out like, should I just do all this stuff by myself? Talk us through what you, like, I know what you mean because I've been there and I know what it's like when you're the point of contact and you've got to call this handy person and that handy person, maybe just to explain a little bit into the detail or maybe give an example of what you meant by either you or your husband calling the handyman and why that can be demanding on your time, especially if both of you are working corporate roles. Yeah, the the way it could be demanding is, let's say, you know, something broke in your house and the, your tenant calls, okay, I need somebody right now. So you say you only have one handyman. So you're calling that. My handyman name was, uh, I don't even remember his name. I think Joe or something. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm call, calling, call him hey, Larry. <laughs> yeah, Larry or Joe, whatever. I'm like, hey, Joe. Like, oh, Winky, guess what? I'm out of town. I won't be back for next two days. And then what? That's a stress level is gone up. So you're just looking through the phone book. Those days were like you have these huge phone books that you go through, calling multiple people, getting in, getting the course. Okay, how much is going to cost, whatever. And then we also set up this thing with our tenants too, like up to $100. If something breaks, you fix it yourself, we'll pay you. But that didn't work either. (laughs) <laughs> so we did, but I think it was really, really stressful because not having that background, that kind of thing. And the other thing was we were thinking that, oh, we got the tenants, we are good, the money is flowing. We were not managing it as a project or as a business. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? There's a yeah. you need to have the basic understanding of it. So now if I look back and think, why didn't we grow in that place? Because we were not ready. Yeah. We were getting consumed or we were like overwhelmed with just having like five tenants or, you know, six tenants. We were just going crazy over it. Oh, they are calling us. What should we do? What should we do? So that's what I'm saying. Every step prepares you for the next step in life. So that was a trial for us to understand the nitty gritty of what the business is going to look like for us going forward. Yeah. And and, and if I could just add on that, because you're giving that explanation of, the person's out of town or maybe the backup of the backup is out of town and keep in mind you have a corporate job so you have Mm -hmm. lots of other activities that are really consuming probably 90 percent of your brain space (laughs) and then you're trying to put you're trying to put out fires and you're trying to work and perform in your role at the same time so as you're as you're listening to Vinky and you're trying to figure out like, do I go down the path of trying to do things myself or do I go down the path of actually figuring out who has already done what I want to do because you're looking for a specific result. Um, so, so I appreciate you sharing that Vinky. I also want to kind of bring it to one of the reasons that we're even here, right? The going long podcast, you know, I've been living in Europe for whatever, 22 years now, which is pretty amazing. Um, and it spent the last almost decade of my corporate career investing exclusively back in the U S at the time, it wasn't something that a lot of people were doing. Like they weren't, you weren't, because all the books tell us, it's not our fault, right? Because the books tell us buy in the exact same place where you live, be able to get there within a 20 minute radius or something like that. I happen to know that you not only have done it yourself, but you also help other people look to invest beyond their backyard 
what I like to call going long or long distance investing, but it wasn't something that was the norm. Like you were a trendsetter. Talk to us about why you felt that it was okay to be able to invest in something that you couldn't literally walk down the street and see whether you're doing it actively or passively. Cause it's, it's very contrarian. I would say most people um, would say, and I always love for you to share with the going along family, why, or why you felt that you could do that. That's a really good question. And a lot of people have that belief that whatever they wanted to buy, it has to be in their backyard because they wanted to feel it, touch it. And that gives them solace that something is right here that is not running away from them. So that's the thing. But uh, investing in um, other places, it more be beneficial for you. In my case, uh, we are in California. So California is not a landlord friendly state. So I wanted to invest with somebody where I can see the good returns. And as long as you have the right partner or the right team in the area you're investing and you have done your due diligence, I do not see any reason then why you're limiting yourself. Because when you say, I wanted to invest in my backyard only, I hear that all the time. So what's happening in that scenario? You're just limiting yourself. You're saying, I can do only this much. And I'm waiting for something to fall into my lap in my backyard, which might happen, which might not happen. And guess what? If that didn't happen for a long time, you're missing out on all the opportunities. You're not seeing anything. And then you, uh, it's our human nature that we compare ourselves with others. Then you say, oh, that person has grown exponentially, but I'm still here. Why? Because you are limited. You are not letting yourself grow. Because you're not trusting the process. And then I'm going to go back to the same thing. Like say, every step prepares you for the next thing in your life. That's what exactly happens. And eventually you'll embrace that and you let go of that limitation or that fear. And I've seen that happening to multiple people around me. Yeah. And I, I appreciate you sharing that. Trusting that you're enjoying today's conversation. And you know what? If you're tired of getting crushed by taxes and you're looking for greater freedom to be able to choose what you want to do when you want to do it, make sure that you go to firstgencp.com forward slash going long and see how we can help you today. Let's get back to the conversation. I do want to go back to that theme of, right, what, what is happening for you today? Like everything that happens today is preparing you for the next thing. And we did talk about your your background, right? Your background is in starting in systems engineer. So really on the IT side of things, you also have this unique talent of also having sales experience as well, uh, as well as being an executive in a very large multinational that you've already named a couple of times. And when you were doing those different roles, while you were in corporate, while you were preparing to look for the next thing with the, with the sales role and as a realtor, Talk to us about how those specific roles and or opportunities, you actually see that what you did in the past is actually helping you to be much more effective as well as efficient today in the way that you are helping others, the way that you are serving others. Because I think that would help a lot of people that are in corporate roles, or maybe they're just getting started and they know that they have a, a, a pretty amazing career ahead of themselves. Talk to us about how you, what you did before is, is helping you to be much more effective and efficient today. Yeah, I mean, in every role, whatever you do, regardless of your corporate role, your business, whatever you're doing in your life, you are acquiring some skill set every day, whether you're doing it being fully aware or you're doing it unconsciously. You are acquiring something. You like, I say the word I use all the time is, observing, observing and absorbing. Mm. You are in that state all the time, right? So you might have noticed that when you're trying to do something or something difficult, like you say, you are, um, uh, what is the word that you use earlier? That you're perfectionist? Recovering perfectionist, yes. Recovering yes. perfectionist, right? So when you're in that more recovering perfectionist, I'm one of those as well. Because what are you trying to do? Because impossible is not in your directory, first of all. Yeah. So impossible is I am possible. So you mm. wanted to give it a shot. You wanted to take a risk. You wanted to do everything, right? So when you're trying to do something, did you ever notice that how something clicks right away that you mm. don't even know you had the knowledge of that? Mm. Yep. So that's the reason I say you are always in the observing and absorbing yep. state. 
So mm-hmm. you have that knowledge within you. So being a, a corporate employee for so many years and dealing with so many people on daily basis, I was not managing the people. I was managing the work. That's the thing I learned in my corporate job because what's, what happens is most of the time people are trying to manage other people. They're dealing with their thoughts, their emotions and everything. But for me, it was managing the work taking the work from conception to completion. And I was like, you can say the star employee because my vision was a little bit different. And that skill set, I brought it into the real estate now because whosoever partners that I'm working with, I am working with them on the project level. So I'm seeing what is done, what is not done. I'm trying to help them. I'm adding value to them in a way, okay, where should we take this project or how should we handle any uh, difficult situations that pop up here and there? And that's the way we manage the projects and that's working seamlessly. Mm -hmm. And that way you can say, I just learned that skill by default or that's the way I think I was brought up that I was, and that's the reason I'm seeing many more opportunities all around me all the time because I'm not letting my thought process or my emotions take over me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So that's a really good skill to have. And, and so it's fantastic when you can take a look back on the things that you've done that prepare you for what you're doing today, right? Because then you start realizing all of these skills and opportunities are cumulative. It doesn't mean mm-hmm. that you're going to get them right every single time, but it means right. even if you didn't get it right, guess what? You learn from the opportunity, which is preparing you for the next for the next thing and the next opportunity and the next time, which I think is, is fantastic. I I also happen to know that you tend to look at things like risk, evaluating risk and being able to talk about risk openly, because that's also part of just what, Mm -hmm. what you do and building a relationship and things like that. But it's also something that for a lot of people, people want to not talk about risk or they want to avoid it, or they want to pretend that it's not there because we don't want to talk about the bad stuff. Talk to us a little bit about what, why you have that, uh, that goal of being able to talk about risk and being able to, to openly understand what it is and, and be able to take it head on. I think risk to me is just like gap of knowledge. You know, it's mm-hmm. like if you do not know something, you don't want to talk about it. You just want it to bury under the sand or whatever the terminology you want it yeah, to yeah, use. Yeah, yeah. You just want it to just like don't want it to bring it up because it's sometimes... It's a difficult thing to talk about. So if you understand the problem, if you, like I say, problem is not a problem within itself, right? Mm. Uh, I Like I use this analogy in one of my classes when I teach IT uh, courses at Cal State, that um, problem, you know, somebody told you, oh, you cannot take the money or the ATM today. I'm going to use the bank example here uh, because the system is down. So what does that mean? The system is down. The whole bank is not shut down, right? Not all the ATMs in the world are shut down. But the thing is, system is shut down and we are wired in a way to think, oh God, the whole world, you know, fell apart. Mm. So problem in itself is not a problem. It's like a bunch of little things together that we say is a problem. So breaking down that concept, and I'm going to relate that to risk as well. So you need to break it down. What is there that I'm scared of? Mm-hmm. Or what is, you know, uh, what is the hesitation? What is the risk is all about? What do I do not know? And if you educate yourself about the process or learn the things or get the acquire, acquire the knowledge, whatever is missing there, there is, you're more comfortable. The risk appetite is bigger. So you don't look at risk the way that you were looking at it before. And you are able to talk about it more openly with others to understand what others' perspective is. Yeah. And I guess ultimately, you know, if you're looking at others' perspective and you're able to talk about it and and it comes back to what you said in the very beginning, ultimately what you're doing is you're filling a gap. And typically Mm -hmm. that gap is a knowledge gap. Mm -hmm. And once you have that knowledge, then you're able to make a much more informed decision and, 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 and you don't feel that things are as risky, but it may work with what your philosophy is and you move mm-hmm. forward or it doesn't work with your philosophy, but at least you have more knowledge and you feel like you're making a more informed decision based on not fear or, or, um, or risk, but because it just doesn't work for you or it does. 
So exactly. And then you're not walking away from the opportunity in that scenario, right? Yeah. It gives you more power. Yeah, yeah. Whether Absolutely. you wanted to go over there or you wanted to walk away and look for something else, but that does not stop right there. It's gonna open up more doors for you, it's gonna bring more opportunities for you. Mm-hmm. But if you're just, you know, closing that door to begin with, oh my God, I don't want to take that risk. I don't want to go there. Yeah. Then it's, then it's kind of a, that's a wasted opportunity, but you've also done something that is, yeah, I guess I would say, well, maybe it's not unique, but not a lot of people do it. A lot of people think about it. And that is going from a very nice, um, well-recognized, well-paid corporate role, large brand. When you tell people you work there, everyone's like, oh my gosh, it must be awesome. You know, <laughs> I did that for a while too. Mm-hmm. But you made a transition from executive, nice company, great benefits, to now deciding to go out and serve people on your own, building your own company. A lot of people are afraid to do that, Vinky. Maybe talk to us a little bit about um, what, that was, what that was like for you and also too, like, cause it, I know I've been through my own kind of struggles through making that transition. Cause I did it for 26 years. It's all mm-hmm. overall corporate life. And now in this new form, you have to find new ways to do things and still be effective and serve other people. But if, for the, whatever you want to share with us, I'd be interested in you sharing us what that transition has been like for you um, or was like for you uh, as well. Cause I'm sure there's a lot of people that are listening and watching us that are like, I want to do it, but I don't really feel comfortable. Yeah, sure. Uh, there's a story behind it as well. Mm-hmm. So I was like attached to my jaw just because I'm from India. And I was attached to this white collar thing mm-hmm. coming from that background. And it was always like you have to have a white collar job. And that's the reason I always, I think, wanted to become a professor, stay mm-hmm. in that zone only without realizing all the opportunities around me. So uh, that's the reason I picked my corporate job back in um early 2000, early 90s when I was in real estate a little bit, mm-hmm. but five years, I think I did that. Uh, but this time I didn't have a choice <laughs> because uh, my job moved to New York about five, six years ago. And they basically told me, we eliminated your position. You only have two choices. Either you just move to New York or you look for something else outside the company because we don't, because a Bank of America was reducing their footprint over here. Mm-hmm. So we don't have anything for you. So I was like, okay, uh, I don't want to move. I was 100% sure about that. and But I wanted to get something out of it, just being served the company for 20 years. So I mm-hmm. negotiated that and I took the package. I was out. And the uh, first couple of weeks were really tough because mm-hmm. it hit me hard that I worked for this company for 20 years. They didn't take even one second to tell mm-hmm. me, oh, we eliminated your position. You wanted to move to New York or you wanted to, you know, it's basically telling you, you don't have a job Mm -hmm. uh, when you're giving you that kind of scenario. So uh, I was like a little bit depressed or worried, like, Oh, did I make the right decision by taking the package? Mm -hmm. And uh, I just went super crazy. I sent out like 500 resumes in two weeks because I thought, Oh, I have so much experience. I'm going to get the job on a silver platter, but that didn't happen. Mm. But the week three and fourth, I started feeling the sense of freedom. Mm. And by the time I got one interview, I think I got a couple interviews, one with Wells Fargo and one with some other financial company. It was a big role uh, in this. uh, It was in the C-suite, not for Wells Fargo, for the other small company. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go for the interview for Wells Fargo, but I went for the interview for the other company. So when I went for the interview, it was a panel interview. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did pretty well. And when I was walking out, I came to my car and all of a sudden I was crying. I was in tears and crying, crying, crying. And I'm thinking in my mind, why I'm crying? And then there was this realization came. Then I just got out of this thing, you know, serving 20 years in a limited pigeonhole kind of thing. And I'm trying to get back into the same thing when I'm going to live. I never lived. And then um, I just made a decision. Okay, I'm not going to take this job if they offer me the position. And guess what? They offered me the position. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. You know, when you run after something, chase something, things do not happen. So I was moving away from that life and that life wanted me back. Mm -hmm. And I told them, no, I don't want it. So I asked my husband, I said, do you want me to work or should I just call myself retiree? He says, it's your choice, whatever you wanted to do. 
So we started traveling. We traveled for a year, so many places. And now one day uh, we were back from Egypt and uh, early morning, like three o'clock or three thirty in the morning, I woke up with a strong feeling, kind of mm-hmm. epiphany, that if I die right now, what did, what did I do in this life? All my experiences, all my knowledge is gonna go with me, and I'm done. I did not make any difference. So I woke up. I created a purpose for myself that I'm gonna need to make a difference in other people's life around me. And it's geared towards women and children. And we support a lot of charities in India mm-hmm. as we speak. And we're trying to make a difference big time, like, you know, if a smaller scale or a larger scale, whatever we can afford at this time. You are making so a difference, by the way. You, you are making a difference. You're not trying to make a difference. You are making a difference, Pinky. Thank you. So that brought me back into real estate because I woke up in the morning. I'm like, what should I do? I didn't want to go back to the corporate world. And now make that minimum salary and then just how I'm going to support the people or the vision that I had. So I thought, I don't want to work for anybody. I wanted to work for myself this time. And I went back into real estate. So I got my, that's another story. I got my real estate license reinstated within four days. Because what happened was my license was expired a long time back because I was mm-hmm. not, you know, uh, doing anything with real estate. And uh, what I did was uh, I scheduled the test for myself. And uh, my daughter said, oh, mom, give yourself a little bit of time, you know, a month or two. Just go through the books, read all the coursework before you go take the exam. I'm like, no, it's going to be too late because I have this epiphany. I have to do something about it. So I scheduled the test before I went to all the any books. So I scheduled the test and I go through all the coursework and everything. And guess what? I passed the test. And now what? I ha- I'm a realtor back again. What should I do? Something I don't want to sell homes. I don't want it to sell businesses. This time I wanted to go into merger and acquisitions because that'll be the best bet for me having the corporate background and have gone through so many mergers on the system side. It's going to be really good to learn the business side mergers. So I was looking for some connections on LinkedIn and I ran into somebody's profile that read $400 million asset under management. I'm like, what is that? And how did that happen? Because I knew this person before. So I picked up a phone, called him. So introduced me to multifamily investing. So that's how I got started in this place. And that's where I am today. Because that helps me um, broaden my vision. And it kind of aligned with my vision. And I felt like I can go in, I can brand myself having the IT background or having the tech background for so many years and having managed my maybe like million projects over the years. I felt like I have the skill set that I can bring into this world and make things happen for me. Yeah. And so and you definitely have the skill set and you definitely can make things happen, not just for yourself, also for others. And, others, exactly. and, and what I, what I really like about what you said, and I want to make sure that the, that the going long family understands this because regardless of if you had, if you were given the option to move to a different place or you took a package or you just left on your own, you always have the option to go back. You mm-hmm. went through the process Right, because a lot of the, and, and what happens, it's all, it's almost like default paths, right? I feel like I'm talking about default paths all the time now. Is when you're when you're leaving one company, um, you know, I was at a really large ERP company, and I could be gone, and then I could the very next day I could work for the competitors and the other competitors and the other competitors. But we always have a choice, and the choice mm-hmm. is okay. Well, you know, given your circumstances, because everyone's circumstances are different, right? So we're not making mm-hmm. I'm not making any judgment. I'm just saying. You always have the option to go back into your corporate role, especially if you've had a successful long-term corporate career, maybe not at that company, but normally if you've been a high performer, you can go to the competitors because they're going to hire you. <laughs> right? That's true. But, but when you, when you make an, a, a decision to say, Hey, look, I know that the corporate world is there and maybe I'll go back because it treated me pretty well up until this point. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Now it's time to bet on me. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to go out and serve the people that I want to serve. I'm going to find my purpose. I'm going to develop my purpose. I'm going to go out and be able to do all the things that while I was playing it safe in the corporate world, now I'm maybe I'm given this opportunity. I've been gifted this opportunity to go out and do something um, a little bit different. So I appreciate you sharing that in total transparency because I think it's awesome because I think a lot of people are in the exact same type of situation and you're helping people to understand one quick question I have to ask you before we get into the going long final three. Mm-hmm. 
because I talked about it in the very beginning. Talk to us about how you are helping others with Lumba Investment Group. What are you doing? How are you helping people? I'm helping them realize their vision because everybody, especially the corporate professionals, uh, they have the money, but they have limited vision too at the same time because not everybody knows about the real estate Mm. and everybody does not uh, know about this vehicle that they can have this something called passive income that they can do and they can set their future or create generation wealth or secure the future of their kids, you know? So I'm educating people on that. I'm helping them that way. So uh, it's just like getting this new concept into their understanding. Because uh, I have learned over the years, if something is not in your experience, you're not able to see it. And I see that on on daily basis, trust me or not, because I have so many friends over the years who are professionals. And when I talk about, uh, talk to them, you know, what I'm doing, I just talk about myself only, what I'm doing, where I am in my life today. What they do is they don't want to talk about it. Like you were talking about the risk earlier, how people don't want to talk about risk. They don't want to talk about it because they think like, okay, if, if I talk to her, I do not know anything. And plus she might ask me to invest with her. I never ask anybody to invest with me, first of all. That's never there on my plate. What I do is I just tell them what I'm doing. Uh, you can do this with your 401k. You can do with your retirement plan. You have so much money sitting idle just like that. So there is a vehicle out there. If you choose to use that to multiply your money, you can do that. You can make your money work for you. So that's the way I help people. By helping them, I'm not going to say that a lot of people do not invest. They do. When they understand the concept, all of a sudden, the light bulb goes on. They're like, hey, I didn't know that you were doing that. Uh, let me do that too. Let me try at a smaller scale first. And guess mm. what? The smaller scale gets bigger and bigger, mm. and which is awesome for me. And that's not it. I'm helping them that way, adding value to their lives. But they are helping me too, because by investing with me, what I do is I'm not taking anything from my investors, but whatever I'm getting out of it, I'm taking that money and I'm helping my nonprofit that geared towards women and children. We are taking the projects in India right now, but someday my vision is take it at the global level. I wanted to make myself or my company that sufficient that we are taking the projects globally and helping the women and children. So my investors, by default, they are helping for that cause. So my goal is to help 1 million people before I exit. And that's all sort of people or whether they have like need how, uh, I mean, wealth education or they wanted to invest, they wanted to create generational wealth or or anybody, you know, any women and children who need any kind of help at any scale. I wanted to make myself that resource, that tool that people can use and get the information or get the help that they need. So I'm just like in a serving mode. I'm there for everybody. I don't want to take anything from anybody. I'm like more like in a giving stage in my life. Yeah, and I appreciate you sharing that. And um, we're going to give you, everyone uh, an opportunity to find out more about what it is you're, you're doing or how they can contact you at, at Lumba Investment Group. And we're going to get to that in just uh, a little bit. But you know what, Vinky, it's come, to, it's come to the time. Like I have to get us to the going long final three. But the thing is, I never ask anyone, and you're our special guest today, the going long final three, unless you tell me that you're ready. So are you ready? Yes, of course. Of course you are. You were born ready. I know that. Everybody knew that. So here's the thing. Vinky, we started with you over on the left coast in the U.S., in California, Silicon Valley. I'd like to bring things back to this side of the pond because even though I'm from Columbus, Ohio, I now call Europe my home. It's been my home for the last 22 years. And so I would love for you to share with us, what is your favorite European city that you have either visited or is still on your bucket list to visit? Wow. Wow. Oh, Europe is so pretty, by the way. I love Europe. There are so many uh, cities in my bucket list. But uh, so far, uh, I would say, oh my God, Rome. Rome, I love. Uh, Napoli or Naples. Naples, yeah, yeah. It. Napoli, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Napoli. I'll then, take Rome. Uh, I'll take Rome. Florence. I'll take Rome. Or w- w- which, one do, which, like, one do, which one do you want to go with? Which one do you want to go with? I, 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 I love all these places. The best place, I think, of all this that I visited, beside Rome, Paris, all that, I think Monaco was the best place that we went to, or Monte Carlo. Mm-hmm. Because 
not a luxurious life. Even you're driving Mercedes, you're the poorest person. <laughs> so we're gonna so we're gonna take money, Carlo. We're gonna take money, Carlo. That's Monte what you Carlo. Said. Yeah, we're gonna take money, Carlo. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, listen, so that's number one. Now we gotta get to question number two. Mm-hmm. And question number two really has a lot to do with I guess my good fortune, right? Because I've been surrounded by and seen and met a lot of very successful people. I consider you to be someone who's very successful as well. You've impacted lives. You continue to impact lives. You even have the vision of, of being able to impact a million lives, which I think is phenomenal. And you've also, right? You've seen this uh, with successful people. One of the things that I believe that has made successful people really successful is that really successful people every single time that they have a plan, they build this plan and then they, unlike most people, they go out and they execute every single plan perfectly the first time, which allows them to go so much faster than... Finky, I think I made a mistake. What happened? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I love this. This is so much fun. Because <laughs> she's like, what do I do when I say something to him? Do I not? Of course, Binky, it's just a joke. This is a joke. I, I like to have fun on my po- I, li- I like to have fun on my podcast a little bit here, towards the end, especially for those of you that are listening and watching mm-hmm. us. No, so here's the thing, Binky, and you know this. I like to have fun with this because mm-hmm. really successful people get everything right every single time, not even close. The thing yeah. is, really successful people, as I'm sure you will agree this is real, that like literally they get 20 to 50 times more mistakes or they make 20 to 50 times more mistakes or learning opportunities or whatever they were trying to do, it didn't work. And it's because they're always trying new things. But, and this is also true, they, unlike most people, they do one thing super differently, very, very differently. And that is every single time that there is a relevant mistake, a relevant mistake, every single time they stop they learn from that mistake. And then what they do next is amazing. They put different strategies, tactics, and actions in place to minimize the probability of that exact same thing happening, right? So I don't want you to think about the, the, the mistake. I don't want you to think about the, the, the learning opportunity because you've shared some of that. But I want you to think about the, the learning that you got and what is that one lesson that you know that we need to hear today here at the Going Long family that you want to share with us? What's one lesson? It's going to be very cliche if I say be positive, because a lot of time people say be positive all the time, but a lot of people don't even understand what that means. Um, Being positive does not mean that uh, you're just going to ignore all the wrong things that happen in life. Like you were saying earlier, every (laughs) everything happens wrong or right. It's just like there's a learning lesson. And again, uh, you know, uh, positivity or negativity is just your perception how you perceive it. There's nothing positive. There's nothing negative. If there's something negative, there is always something. There's a silver lining there. So you have to see for that. So it's like how you position yourself. That's the uh, thing I'm going to say. Position yourself in a way that you're seeing challenge opportunities in every situation. And there is always a silver lining. Like I said, in the negativity too, look for that silver lining. Make yourself that big or increase your perception that way so that you're not focusing on negativity, thinking that, oh, why this happened to me or victimizing yourself. Awesome. So be positive. I love that. And think about the things that you're doing, the right positioning, but most importantly, be positive and and look at the, keep perspective on things. Appreciate that, Pinky. Thank you so much. And then the last question is really about helping us to feed our minds with knowledge what is one book that you would recommend to the Going Long family today? Let me think. A good book. Uh, I'm going to tell you something regarding this whole conversation that we had today. So one good book that I can recommend is uh, by Professor Mihai, Chikson Mihai. The book name is Flow. So mm-hmm. if you get to that state flow state. And I think I recommended this book multiple times at multiple portals. And some of my friends, they call it Winky's flow. Because <laughs> when you're in a flow state, things are happening for you. Because you're not bothered by it. And you're seeing the opportunities versus, you know, sticking on to the negative things around you. Mm. 
Mm. Focusing your energy in a way, like you're creating that optimal experience for yourself. That's what the book uh, is all about. It's about human psychology. It's mm-hmm. a really good book. Fantastic. So, um, flow. We're going to include that in the show notes. So, don't worry, everybody. If you're running on the treadmill, you're cooking, if you're driving, don't worry. All you're going to need to do is click a link, and it's going to take you directly to the book that Vinky has recommended. So, Vinky, I literally, I am always a, a, astounded, right? Because I'm, and I know I've been a guest on on your podcast, and these conversations like they fly by, they literally fly by. And if I think about like from the very beginning, you're talking about about you being in India, it's June 29th. And before you knew it on June 15th, you're married and you're getting ready to move from where you were to where you wanted to go. But you also made your first major decision because that was like, hey, look, you know what? I know that this is happening really quickly. Um, I know I have the option to go or not go, but I want to go. And so not only did you make that decision, but then very quickly, you're changing continents and you were going to a very new place and doing a new thing, starting in a new uh, career, And then guess what? You decided you wanted to start your family pretty quickly there too. And so that was another decision that you're making. And you realize that, you know what? First child, also too, you wanted to get back into the corporate world. You had this dream of being a professor, but hey, listen, you wanted to get into the management trainee uh, at a financial services company. And little did you know that you would start there and you would end up actually investing 19 years and being able to have a number of different roles, combining IT. You had some sales experience because you realized that you had the opportunity to leave your one home and became a realtor, got the second home. And then also you realized, hang on a second, we don't always have to work, have our time to make money because you had this accidental landlord, which allowed you to realize like, hey, there's an opportunity to actually have assets that will pay us and afford us the lifestyle that we want to be able to do. And so as you went through that, you got your first experience there. Then you decided life happened along the way as well. And there was a corporate opportunity and it said, well, are you going to stay here? Are you going to move across country? And you opted to stay where you were because your life and your family, the things that are priorities for you today helped you realize that this is where you wanted to stay. You thought about going back into corporate. You had the opportunity to But you know what? Now you have a bigger vision, a bigger purpose, and you want to be able to go out and you are serving others, doing that in your way, really having a focus on being able to serve women and children. Right now it's focused in India, but you also have that vision of being able to serve a million people all across the globe. And you're doing that with with Lumba Lumba Investment Group. And you know what? I am keep talking and all, everybody in the Going Long family is going, Billy, just ask her the question, please. So yeah, let me ask you the question, Binky. The whole thing is everybody wants to know, how can we find out more about you, what it is that you're doing at Lumba Investment Group and that we can connect with you? Help us understand. How can we get in touch with you? I think the best uh, way to get in touch with me is you can connect with me on LinkedIn or um, uh, go to my website, lumbainvest.com. And uh, uh, you can send me a contact request from there too. But other than that, I do have a podcast, which you said earlier, The Real Estate Vibe Show. Please tune into that podcast and you will get to hear lots and lots of stories, success stories, and lots and lots of different trajectories, because that will give you more insight into that there are so many probabilities and so many possibilities or opportunities all around us. Mm-hmm. And it depends upon your decisions, your choices in life, which path you wanted to take. Yep, absolutely. And like I said, you were very gracious and I have had an opportunity to be on your podcast as well. So definitely check her out on our podcast. Make sure you, when you connect with her on LinkedIn, that you send her a personalized invitation. Let her know that you've already listened to her here on the Going Long podcast. It's going to help the two of you continue the conversation. Uh, Vinky, I just want to say thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for you deciding to invest your time with me and the Going Long family today. Thank you very, very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Billy. I really enjoyed our conversation today. All right. Awesome. Thanks. And Vinky, can you give me like 10, 15 seconds just to wrap things up with the Go Along family and then I'll, I'll get you out of here. So Go Along family, listen, Vinky shared it all, like super transparent, gave you things about the mistakes that were made, the way that she's gone out and is looking to continue to add value to others, have a focus and a purpose and being able to grow into that. Take today's conversation, share it with your family, share it with your friends. Go from the theory that you're thinking about doing to actually taking action. Take the next step. Whatever you're doing, just like Vinky said, what you're doing today is preparing you for the next thing. So get more experience, get more reps. 
And while you're out there sharing, talking about today's conversation, I'm going to be preparing the next conversation. So until then, go out and make it a great day. And thank you very much. Trust that you enjoyed today's conversation. And once again, today's conversation was sponsored by First Generation Capital Partners. If you're an accredited investor and want to find out more about how we're helping accredited investors to gain their personal freedom even faster, go to firstgencp.com forward slash going long.